It, it might be considered a nice hero here against, you know, the Timbersaw. It feels good to be this good. But apart from that, I'm not really feeling too much of it. Guess you do have the nice little Clink Zeus combination. So you've always got the Thunder God's Wrath to, to finish somebody off if if B Cod can get some, uh, some nice initiation off on the supports. You've always got that. And again, global gank crane with Spirit Breaker plus Clinks plus Zeus. There is a lot of really aggression once you hit, say, level six and you have that Solar Crest stuff on B God. You can just constantly try to feed off of. Heroes that are just farming up in jungle, heroes that are out of position. And that is the key to success here for the cut. Have to bring out that constant aggression if possible. But I'm sure the side of the American Goons, not going to be all too easy to burst down. Like, say you jump Giant, just going to have Disruption up. You jump the Bat Rider, he's got the Flame Break, the Firefly to get out of dodge. You jump the Timber Saw, he's a little bit too tanky, so... I'm not sure who you really target down with this gank train, but you've got to find someone here. Well, we're having some, uh, I think, some ping issues here for for B God, so they're just going to take their time to reconnect while they still have a, a, a good chance at it. I've never heard that voice like before. Uh, it's actually kind of funny. I like it. I have. I wish I knew who was saying it. I'm not sure who in the cut is saying that, unless they got someone That's, else to say it. I think I want to imagine it's cut. MTD. I want to imagine it's MTD. Yeah, why not? He'll well, use his boyish charm that? to beat the enemies. I don't know. He has that boyish charm. I can you see his cams. Hold on a minute, John. Chains out on B God. Flame Break is not going to land from Pingu's, but they do have a blood grenade. S going to continue the chase. He does have another chains rather soon, but just wants the final right click and he is going to get it. First See, you go for the level one chains, but you secure first blood with it, and that's going to feel very well worth it here for Esk. Not going to mind too much. You head into the lane, sure, you're not going to be able to harass out too hard, but you manage to get your initial wand flying out, so you're going to get a lot of value in that Zeus lane. You hit level two, you're going to be fine anyway. It's not like you'll get a lot of value from the Flame Guard with Zeus and his magic damage. Because that will just melt. So just try to dodge out as best you can. Try to use those chains to your advantage. And control the lane. Again, this is not too bad for MTD. You can just sit back, play with the Arc Lightning. He's always got the Bailout and the Heavenly Jump if things get a little bit too dicey. So in terms of a, of a lane matchup, not too bad for the Zeus. It's just really going to boil down to... Rune control and trying to get yourself with the water runes while also denying it from Esk. I think you have to kind of always deny it off from the Ember to really feel good here on that Zeus. What about that top lane? Like Boris and Pingu's right now going up against Arde and Bigod. Because we know Arde last game around, he had a fantastic laning phase in the Magnus. So he did not really end up being, uh, being a win for them, sadly, but... It definitely was a really nice performance here in the laning stage from the Mag. This game on the Spirit Breaker, he's having another pretty good start to the laning stage. Doesn't really feel like the, the Batrider Morphling lane can slow down the SB too much. So I imagine he should have another great start. And the thing is, once you get the Vanguard up on the Spirit Breaker, he, he kind of just becomes unkillable. Yeah, it's not going to be something that you can fully handle all too well. On the side of the American Goons, Pingus. Ah, he always got the Flame Break. That is something that does stop forced movement from Ade. So he's not going to be able to finish up a lot of these charges. The Bat Rider support getting a lot of value there. Just off the back of that interaction with Flame Break. As long as you cut off Ade from charging, you feel pretty happy there. And the final lane, the bottom lane, of course, you do have uh, Empyrean. And Scourge McDuck going up against Giant and Lil Nick. Looks like Lil Nick has been taking a fair bit of damage here on the, the Timber Saw, but because it does have that reactive armor to kind of uh, kind of heal up with, so should be just fine. Scourge McDuck actually kind of low on mana himself, but it, it is Medusa. You know, he just pops a Mystic Snake and just kind of heals it back up. It's not too big of a deal. Bottom tower. Seems like the, the Medusa should have a decent enough time farming. The Disruption is now out, so they do catch Empyrean for a moment. But Lil Nick doesn't really have any kind of follow-up here on the Timber Saw, so he's going to be just fine. Not going to be looking for those kills. All you want is a little bit of spacing here for Lil Nick. 
Allow your timber saw to uh, get some initial farm up. We're gonna try and punish the Spirit Breaker now. Art A just running right through the Firefly is in a little bit of danger. Gets a nice little bash onto Pingus before he does go down. So at least helps set up for B God to trade. As Boris is continuing to just move forward here with the Strength Morph on the Morphling. B God, he's gonna be able to survive the Onslaught. There's quite a bit of damage coming out here from the Morph. B God is continuing now as we might see a charge very soon from Arde. But, uh, but Boris. I suppose would have always just been fine anyway with the strength morph, so Arde does, does not bother. He'll hold out on the charge. Overall, a pretty solid start here for Boris and the Morphling, I think, Jonathan? It's not falling behind too badly. He's getting some initial farm, finding a few kills for himself. He's already kind of feeling a solid enough start here for the morph. Pinkus is doing his job well. The one thing you'd want is maybe holding on to the flame break just to break off the charge. But you can't fault Pingus for looking for some aggression here. Are they again going to charge? But they are trying to chase down B-God by the looks of it. Flame Break does miss again. B-God's still being chased, but they don't have the waveform to play with. So the Clinks is going to be just fine. Had they landed the Flame Break, maybe they could have gone for a proper chase, but that was not the case, sadly. But I do appreciate how much pressure they are applying. Like, this is a Morphling Batrider lane, but they are not letting up on the aggression. Just make it as hard as possible for Ade to just get his own farm, his own levels up. And kind of also prevent the Clinks from just having a free ride into his Solar Crest here. So I like these solutions coming out from the Goons. And that does give a little bit of a moment for Bigot to get a bottle top up for MTD. And Arzeus is doing a little bit better in this lane, that's to be expected. You, you don't tend to go for the Flame Guard in this lane at all. So it is just a 2-3 build here for Esk. Oh, oh. Lane again. Chased down by the Firefly of, uh, of Pingus, and he's just down. And this Batride has been such a nuisance here towards the Spirit Breaker. And they're doing a really damn good job of slowing down this Vanguard timing. Like, he's got Ring of Health up now, but this Vanguard, he's been so close to it for such a long time, and he just can't pick it up. Thundergod's Wrath does come in, but I think they were trying to snipe the Morphling. And Boris does have just enough HP to survive through it. Just barely. Fully strength morphed up. Not going to be punished, so he's going to be able to reset just fine. And just get a little bit of regen going. At the least, you find some punishment onto Pingus, but... Not the biggest kill you'd want to really find here. <laughs> Again, all the lanes coming out for American Goons feeling pretty alright. Perhaps a little nick off to a bit of a slower start, but... Does have the Vanguard up on his own timber saw in comparison. They're collapsing onto mid here. MTD keeping a pretty defensive position though. Okay, I'm gonna continue trying to get some vision down here on the MTD. It's a lot of commitment from Giant and uh, and Pingus. They have the vision over the Zeus, they see exactly where he is, but they don't really have the Disable to lock him down, and I don't think it'd be quite safe to dive the Tier 1 tower. So they'll leave him be. Seven minute w Wisdom Runes are coming up, it seems like Pingus is going to go for a bit of a fight here with B-God over this. There is going to be a charge out to at least punish the Bat Rider, though B-God is able to outkick him anyway, so now the Pat is in a lot of trouble. Are they going to show up? And Pingus eventually does not fall. He just five flies to the low ground, and he'll actually just run right into the Tier 3 tower and deny himself off. Love to see it. It's a little bit of a reset. Nice Bottom steal though. Steal from Egon. Hmm. Lil Nick. Chain away is there, but they've got the damage. Scourge McDuck able to find the final right click to secure the kill. You like seeing this rotation out from MTD again, utilizing the magic damage he does have on hand to help put a lid on that Timber Saw's early start. This is providing a lot of space for Scourge McDuck on the Medusa to just farm up. You know, just going for the typical Medusa build up and Manta style rush first. And just kind of get going from there. Overall, it's still a rather even back and forth, 4 to 3 in favor of the cut, but network lead not really there to speak of. Oh. MPD. This will be a big pickle. 
Remnant is there from Ask MTD. Gonna at least find the Batrider before he does go down, but in the end, he's still doing the die as Ask. Yeah, duke out a lot of the damage coming up from the Silencer. So, I mean, in the end, you got MTD down. Like, even if you lose the Batrider first, it's not really the biggest deal. Yep. More than satisfied for Ask. Find that. He has his face boots or corrosion up. So he does do a lot of damage if you just allow him to right click away on the ember. And he'll just go for a bit of a reset himself. Again, a 5 to 4 start, rather even. Good back and forth from both sides. I think the pressure is on the cut though. To start playing a little bit more aggressively. Perhaps once you have 6 and Ade, that's when you start to, you know, clump up, connect with your clinks, try to melt some heroes. B God still a ways off from that full solar crest though. It's not going to be as fast in finding that burst. You can be sure once that's up, and the cut's aggression will kick into overdrive. Still, both sides taking the chance to just kind of farm up what they can. Like again, Scourge Muck Duck pretty much has a free lane. So he's going to be feeling good heading into, jung in into the jungle once the Yasha alone is up. And you don't really have a good way of hunting down the Dusa just yet, so... You're going to have enough room for the cut and on a better scaling hero for good old Bo Scourge McDuck, I think you're going to be happy in just playing a slower game. Though again, have to worry a little bit about the Morphling. Boris also not contested too hard. That's kind of the thing. Like, I think for uh, for the American goons, they, they just have confidence in their ability to be able to counter out the Medusa this game. It seems to be what's, what it's going to be all about. Mid lane MTD getting caught by a chains, but is not going to be dived on. B God now the one in danger, but Pingu's going to get charged by Are, so B God is still going to go down. Disruption is there onto Are, but he gets the Nether Strike onto the Bat Rider. Problem is now he needs his own way out. Chances are he's not going to make it out because the chase is on. And in the end, Giant is able to secure the kill onto Are. So a two for one trade, only the Bat Rider going down and. MTD couldn't even make his way over to help out because he was too low in HP. Meanwhile, Lil Nick misses the chain, so Imperium is going to be fine. And Lil Nick, now the one in danger, will go down. The rotation from the Zeus does pay off. And that's what you want to see here from the side of the cut. Finding some pickoffs of your own. I think to see how much. Who? Yeah, mid lane, he just TPs into the mid and they dive him immediately. Just no hesitation knowing the Zeus was not around. Just get the punishment while they can. I'm keen to see how much a Zeus with Phylactery does. I think that's going to be a pretty interesting time. I don't I don't think we've ever seen the Zeus in pro games recently ourselves. Although I'm pretty sure even when the Zeus was popular with, say, the Shard buildup, just never saw it in pro games. Then again, I guess the Shard was a bit of a meme. Probably not going to go for that for... MTD, at least I hope not. Uh, Lightning Hands is cool fun, to see but... if he could, could be pretty cool to see if he finds a build with it. As... Well, Purge is out mid lane. Speaking of MTD, they slow him up, but do they have the damage? He's actually just going to TP out right in front of them, so they actually did not. Giant actually able to TP out as well, so he'll make it back to the fountain. A lot of focus here on making sure this mid Zeus does not have a good game. I suppose at the very least they do force him to, to go back to the fountain, so there is that. The, well, at least for now, the cut seemingly having a pretty even game. A lot of stacks to be taken here by Scourge McDuck and B-God. And nobody from, uh, nobody from American Goons, as far as I'm aware, has scattered out these stacks that were made. So they're not going to intervene. I mean, all the farm is going to go the Medusa's way. Mind you, she is still behind in net worth in comparison to, say, the Ember. Esk is still top of the net worth board himself. Even after all those stacks, they are going to find Pingus in the Bat Rider. Giant's also going to die by the looks of it. Disruption is out, but it won't really matter. It only slows things down. And the cart, they find a couple more nice kills for themselves. It's even Esk now being chased down here by the Zeus. MTD, not going to go too much further. We'll leave him alone. Yeah, I'm not going to force the issue too hard. They've got the opportunity to shove in mid. Mind you, not the fastest push in the world here from the cut. 
with numbers you can do a lot of good chip damage out onto that we got just not ready yet to provide a little bit of that push capacity little nick yeah charge is there they will cancel the charge off eventually so they have found Arde, but he does use the pig out to get away from this scenario mtd still chasing down esk would love one more lightning bolt but can't get it the remnant was there from the ember so esk is going to be going to be able to survive but the phylactery is proving to be pretty painful though with the uh with the zeus there's a lot of extra damage being provided here I mean, with Lightning Bolt and Phylactery, he's doing 500 damage on a 6 second cooldown. It's pretty insane. Yeah, it's a lot of output for MTD. And you kind of just want to try to work that up. And just keep trying to apply pressure with your Zeus. Again, you're almost at the point where you can start considering that global gank train. With a Spirit Breaker plus the Clinks and the Zeus presence on top of that. And that's where, that's where we need to see the cut get. Right? Like, just... Shut down the map, start to apply pressure on the Morphling, start, start to hunt down these supports, feed off these softer targets, and kind of roll from there. You do have that full medallion at the very least up here for P-God. That's a little bit more... Uh, there's a little bit more damage coming through. Top lane. Bit of a chase here onto the Morphling. Of course, Esk is going to die here in the mid lane. So Are able to secure the kill onto the Ember, which is going to feel very, very nice because Esk had not died once yet throughout this uh, throughout this game. They finally take him out. Bit of a wrap around here into the mid lane. Pingus is rocking up from the from the backside, but decides to just stack instead. Not going to try and go after the Zeus yet. But it seems like he may have been spotted out because MTD is right on top now. Pingus is just gone kind of stacks up for the enemy now. Yeah. He's trying to play greedy on a bad rider. Punished for it. The cut not going to ask any questions while they pick up these free stacks for themselves. And the cut now again riding us very slight networkly. The farm distribution a little bit smoother. On the side of American Goons, you don't have any outliers in this draft. The outlier here for the cut is definitely Ade. He is going for this Shadow Blade at the very least. It's going to be easier for him to charge in without worrying about the force movement cancellation coming out from Pingus. And, well, Nick, he's been left alone for quite a fair bit of time. Let's have the Lotus War, Bob. So, yeah, you, uh, you do have some solutions coming out now on the side of the American goons. We'll see how it does develop. I and mean, you are giving a lot of space out for Boris. A smoke out here on the side of the American goons. The big god. He's caught here on the pinks. Lasso is going to be out. B God he is just down. Cheeky little pick up there onto the clinks. Rotations once again going into the mid lane. See, against the Medusa, you always want to open up the map by taking the mid tier one tower. American Goons, chains around. They have caught MTD with that. And with Lil Nick moving in, MTD proving to be in a lot of danger. But are they going to charge through an esque? About to drop, does Remnant away. He will barely make it. It's now even the Medusa's rotated over. Stonegate's Wop was popped here by Scourge McDart just preemptively. But there was going to be no follow-up to the disruption anyway. Giant was just trying to retreat. Radiance middle tower Still the cut. Uh, unable to get any pick-offs, but also surviving and making sure their mid-Zeus does not drop. I suppose as long as their Medusa's hitting creeps, they're probably going to be very, very happy with themselves. You don't mind too much. And Scourge McDuck has not been scouted out in the triangle. He's not been pressured outside of that. Laning phase to reduce his ramp up is kind of set to go. Already one ultimate orb up. Just a little bit more for the secondary along with a full Scotty gun to get finished up there. For the side of American Goons, this draft is a little bit slower. You can play active with like your Ember and Timber Saw, but you are waiting for your morph to kind of hit a big stride. Another smoke attempt though from the side of the American Goons. Oh, Empyrean, I believe was spotted there for a moment by Esk. Chains don't come out, but it doesn't really seem necessary anyway. Empyrean gonna be get caught, just goes down very, very easily. <laughs> he 
18 minutes in, such an even game between these two teams. The cart charges out. They are going onto the Bat Rider, and it's going to be a pretty easy kill for Arde, though now he's going to find himself in danger. Boris will move in, but I don't think they can actually try to secure the kill. Esk does show up at the last moment, but it's a little bit late to the party. And so they will get away with a free Bat Rider for themselves. It's Esk now. Charge out. He's already committed the Slider Fist. Remnants aren't going to be expended. Disruption will save them. But can he actually make it out? Slider Fist does actually juke out the Lightning Bolt, but he's still gone. He is still down on the Nether Strike damage of Arde. Bit of a upsetting turn of events for the Ember, to say the least. But the cart doing another great job of uh, finding these pickoffs. And again, this is where their lineup shines here on the cut. Just this constant aggression. This is when they need to keep playing. And it's only get to set only set to get stronger as Adi is starting to work onto his ags. For the side of American Goons, you need to kind of sit back, cut your losses, keep farming up. Your lineup is kind of geared for maybe a bit of a later timing. You're gonna need some items up. The Yules is on hand at least for S to get out of the global sounds, but everything else is not quite there yet. Well, they're going to lose the Battle Hider again. Pingu's not having the, the greatest game in the world here in the battle. Already 10 deaths his way. So it can be very challenging against Spirit Breaker to be absolutely fair to him. Now he's been doing a fantastic job going for a going for one of my favorite item build-ups. Johnny's going for the Shadow Blade Aghanim Scepter. It's a uh, classic pub build for the Spirit Breaker this game. I like it. Again, like this aggression is only set to get worse once... Ade does have the Ags up. The constant charging forward is not something you can match in tempo for the American Goons, at least not until later on. Still need a lot of items to come through here on the Dire side to start to feel good. You are just trying to play a slower game. Still, like with the vision games you get, with how far fast you can kind of connect on Ade, with the scouting potential as well of B God. No heroes safe on the map. And even if these kills aren't on the biggest heroes in some of the times, you're more than happy just finding kills overall with this kind of lineup on the cut. The cut now having a hunt around. That's going to show up mid. Scourge McDuck. Just chipping away at the tier 2 mid tower. Cut have drawn lines down towards the bottom lane, so they seem to know that the American goons are hanging around somewhere there. Little Nick and, and Giant both playing quite defensively, though. As I say that, they are looking at Arde bottom lane. Radiance top tower is under attack. So down towards Empyrean now, but they won't see this the uh, the silencer. No wards or no vision to to give the, that information away. Scourge McDuck now heading down south as well. So, so many heroes from both sides here, but nobody sees each other. Now American goons do successfully back their way out. There was no charge to come out from Arde. American goons, they might just set up for the tier one tower defense. Scourge McDuck though, just gonna get started anyway on the Medusa, not too afraid of really anything at the moment. Does have the Grove Bow, so can hit from, uh, from safety's range. Charge out on Giant. Bit of an awkward position for him because he's already committed the disruption onto Scourge McDuck. And that T1 bottom tower is just going to go down. Just false. No strong defense coming out here from the side of the American Goons. Again, they're just cutting their losses. They understand this is the cut's timing. This is when they really want to play fast. However, you are dropping a lot of resources on a map. Roshan opens up now for the side of the cut. Not going to take too long to find that first Aegis of the game. And well, if Scorch McDuck picks himself up in the Aegis, I don't think you have enough to kill him twice over. Granted, that doesn't even feel like Scourge McDuck needs to pick up this Aegis. Could be better off on Ade if you want that to happen here. and Or maybe MTD. And again, the side of the goons force to sit back and farm. If you have this morph solution, you are one part away from full Ags now for Boris. 
So with the early Ags timing turning into the Dusa, turning into the Spirit Breaker feels a lot better. At the very least here for Boris. But again, it's it. It's going to be a little bit of a patience game now from the side of the American goons. There we go. American goons top lane. They could be caught in a very rough position here. Charges out from Giant. Boris is going to show up for a moment, but he might regret doing that. Waveform away. Goes for the TP play out, and they actually have no cancel. He's okay, but the card are proving to be just so powerful now with this Medusa. It's being the center of this draft, just making sure that she just remains in kind of on the front lines, just allowing her team to do whatever the hell they want. The cut can move into the top tier too. American Goon's not really looking for a, a big fight, I don't think. I'm just going to sit back here and allow the cut to take the T2 top tower for free. So I say that, TP's are incoming, but it's only Giant. It's getting the illusions of the Medusa. It's going to be a little bit annoying here for Scourge McDuck, but ultimately he seems just fine as the charge is out now. B got giving the vision over, and Giant is just going to melt. They don't even need Arde there. Just the uh, timing's already up for B-God. With the Solar Crest alone, you can already melt a lot of these heroes. Oh. Charge in again. They're onto Pingus, but the Force stuff actually cancels off the charge, and now the Lasso was committed, but Arde is okay. However, they do find B-God as a bit of a trade. Tell me about it. A one for two in the favor of the cut once again. Seeing that, seems like goons do not want to keep this fight going. They'll back off. They realize they, they are still too far behind to go up against the, the Medusa. I mean, you do have the Aghanim Scepter on the Morphling, but I don't think Boris is feeling quite confident enough to make the uh, the big plays happen yet. No. Certainly not. It does feel like he needs a few more stat items to come out here. to will start to feel confident. Perhaps once the Scotty's up and running on the Morph, that's when things start to simplify a little bit more. Full Ags up now in Ade. So here comes the fun times for the Spirit Breaker. Just constant charge across the map. Hmm. Oh, Lincoln's fear being all, built up on... Uh, yeah, go on, John. This is all defensive item build up on Ask. Like, you old since BKB, understandably so, considering all the output and control right now on the side of the cut. It's not going to feel comfy. You're relying mainly on your Morphling for damage, maybe a little bit coming out here from Lolnik as well. A slow siege beginning on the mid. Mid tier two. Oh, Scourge. No, oh, he's just frontlining. Disruption's going to be there. He does have the Age of Sub, so he's feeling confident. Horus is going to morph into the Medusa. Meanwhile, on the backside, Esk has found both supports. Looks like they will focus down Imperium first. Meanwhile, the Aegis is already down. This is looking quite bad, in fact, for the cut now, because the Lasso dragback is there on Scourge McDuck. He's going to try and stone gaze throughout all this, but nobody's looking at the Medusa. In fact, Esk, he does run right back into Scourge McDuck's loving arms. Arde, in the meantime, still going after Lil Nick, but Lil Nick does find MTD before he is going to go down. Not a bad fight at all, as Lil Nick is still running. But the arrow does chase him down. Scourge McDuck able to pick up the kill. And now the man fight of the century, Boris versus Scourge McDuck. Nobody losing any HP right now. The Scourge is out of mana and might just drop here to the Morphling. So he can't really tank through this damage output, I don't think. Scourge, though, he does at least find the Batrider before he does go down. But it is a one-team fight here for American Goons. One of the slowest fights I've ever seen, in fact. I mean, at the end, you're just standing still right-clicking down to do so. And she's right-clicking back. You know, I, I don't think we've ever seen a fight break out like that where people just are right. Hands off the keyboard and mouse. Just see what the right-clicks do. Of course, you do win out right now on Boris. But again, a lot of back and forth coming out here. You have some protection now on the Dusa. With that Lincoln Sphere up, so you will have to find a way to purge on Giant if you want to get the Deuce of Disruption Illusions out going for yourself. And for the side of the American Goons, the, the patient fight does, wear, does pay off. You know, you find these openings, you drag in 
the side of the cut, forcing them to play into your hands. It's not the best feeling for the cut. And this, this is where things do get to a little bit worrying, Mike. Right, like Boris getting more stats with his own Lincolns coming through. You've got the full Ags up and running for little Nick. So with a barrier plus max stats coming in, you shouldn't be able to burst down this timber saw either. Everything kind of lining up for the side of American Goons now to start playing their own game. I'm sure maybe Ask is still a little bit under farm for an Ember Spirit, but you are mainly using this guy to zip in and out, look for the back line and provide some openings rather than actually dish out the damage to clean out these kills. You're not anywhere near out of it yet for the cut. It just feels like this morph house has become a bit too much of an issue. There's your, your shards up on B God now, coming out for free thanks to the Tormentor going down. Radiance Bottom T2 tower, tower are going to be under siege as well. Not too much to fear here for the uh, for the American goons at the moment. We'll stick around for the bottom tier 2 tower. There it goes. Do they try for high ground? Of course, chances are they won't. Like, you might just wait for the next Roshan. I don't think they're feeling that quite that confident to go high ground yet. You need more items up. Um, by the time you get Lincolns on Boris, perhaps it's a little bit safer. I think ideally you'd want maybe a little bit more coming out here on Esk. Like if he gets a little bit more damage on top of this defensive buildup, you're pretty happy. The side of the cut though, understanding you know, they, they, they still have a pretty decent shot. They will go for a smoke play. Surprise, surprise, Mike. MTD is going for the lightning hands build. Ooh. He is going for the full moon shard with a Midas up, so... He's going to be playing with his lightning hands and he can see what it does. It's pretty strong. Like, if you're allowed to just stand there and hit people, it definitely feels like it will pay off. Charge out from Arde. They're going to find the Bat Rider now, so Ping is again going to go down. The cut. I mean, they do get scanned out, so it seems like American Goons are thinking about going for a fight. Boris, he's going to morph into Scourge McDuck. Arde's moved in with the Nether Strike. It hasn't really amounted to too much quite yet. The Scourge is still trying to just chase down the Morphling. Boris is going to go back to work again, but there's just too much control going on right now. He just can't move. He'll have to morph back into the uh, into the Morphling form very, very soon, as he's dropping rather low now. Boris needs the Strength Morph. Can't get it off, though. He's completely out of mana. Boris is just going to go down. So this time around, they just completely control him on this, uh, this Morphling. Is Lil Nick at least finding one more for his trouble? The runaway is there with the chains. Two very low heroes on the side of the cut need to be very cautious because Lil Nick is still having a hunt around. MTD barely able to escape for now. He's not going to be able to make it. Lil Nick takes him with him to the graveyard. But it's still a one team fight for the cut. Y you can't take that away from them. Yeah, that's a nice little win for the side of the cut. It does cost them a little bit more than maybe they'd want to, but they do win out in the end, getting that control. You are pretty hard to handle in Spurge Muckduck. Again, for our Morphling, with a Scotty up, it feels pretty good, but the Lincolns does feel necessary now, just to ensure that you aren't going to be locked in yourself. 5k lead percent against self for the cut off the back of that. Again, that was them going for the smoke play, that's them finding the initiation. And you just can't underestimate when the cut does take these fights because they don't need to wait for too much. Maybe you wait for Global Silence. Beyond that, you see anyone on map, you charge out, you run your clinks down, and you get uh, MTD ready to go and pretty much have the response you need. MTD, speaking of, already has one Hyperstone up. So more right clicks to play with. Here we go. We'll see how this, this pays off. Punch is there. Yule Scepter going to duke out the, the charge. Scourge McDuck immediately going to pop the Stone Gaze. Might just find Giant on the, on the Disruptor, or excuse me, rather the Shadow Demon, but he's okay. Thunder God's Wrath does come out just to keep the vision up, but doesn't secure any kind of kills here for MTD. 
The Roshan is available. So they could have first dibs on that Roshan right now if they wanted to, but they're kind of going to leave it for, for, for the moment. It's American Goons, they are moving their way down very slowly. Nor Nick going to scout out Roshan and see absolutely nobody in there. Now a full Daedalus up for Scourge McDuck, so he's hitting a, a quite a bit harder. Slow Nick looks to go into MTD on the Zeus. MTD going to be fine for now. Scourge McDuck copying a fair bit of damage, but it gets all the mana back in just an instant. As Boris is not morphing over to the Medusa yet. He's just going for the fight against Scourge McDuck, who is actually losing the fight right now. As Boris is just going to take him out. And there's no buyback Jeez. available for Scourge, because he just bought the Daedalus up. Arne's going to go to boot. And suddenly there's two down. Just like that. You get Fook, Sound, Medusa. No defensive items outside of the Lincoln's Mantis. So you're still susceptible to a lot of spell damage coming out here. And that's going to be a big opening for the side of the American Goons into the Roche de Go. Aegis Cheese ready to be handed over. Boris starting to become a massive issue in that Dusa form. Even little Nick with his Ags. You saw him kind of spacing in and out goes in when the barrier is fully charged just to get a little bit more damage out there as well to soften up that Medusa and despite being 4k behind with the American Goons taking the Roche it does feel like they can they can start to dictate how a lot of these fights start to shape up as well and for the side of the cut I mean you're gonna have full moon shard up Mike you're gonna have them lightning hands so yeah three right clicks coming out for MTD. I have to say though, the damage feels pretty underwhelming. It's not as uh, crazy as you'd hope, and I think that was kind of uh, the case where Zeus did falter off because, well, the jazz hands just aren't enough sometimes, Mike. Yeah, it's kind of the thing. Like, no one ever lets you just stand there as Zeus and hit them. You know, you usually get punished quite hard for it, and we saw Lil Nick just last team fight chasing MTD down freely. So at the very least, that you know, maybe that's what he wants as a Zeus is for someone to run into the mantle illusions, just take a billion damage with the moon shard up now. But I, I kind of doubt it's going to be that easy. It's mid lane, Boris is going to start pushing in the mid tier two tower. Does morph into the Medusa. TD now going to show up as well. The morph going to be just fine though. Little Nick, in fact, initiating as the timber. Now the lasso actually catching out MTD on the Zeus. So Giant is the one to go down as MTD is happy to turn around and just keep this fight going. Lil Nick still trying to move in for the Zeus, but he has been caught off guard. And he is going down. It's maybe a little bit of too of an aggressive play, just chaining in like that to, to initiate. And they do get punished for it. We see again Empyrean with the double silences starting to be really impactful in the middle of these fights. You just can't take these prolonged engagements just yet from the side of the American Goons. Despite having Aegis, they'll lose their tier 2. Big opening found by the cut. They start pinging high ground. You're still fairly healthy here on Scourge McDuck, so you can front line. Morph will be back up in a second, and it is ready to go. Let's see what the game plan is. Uh, it does feel like the cut Again, despite dropping a few losses here and there, they're overall they've worked the map a lot better here. They've got themselves a 10, 11 kill lead with a tier 3 falling. Boris. Yeah, I mean, he'll just morph into the Medusa and make it impossible to go high ground now because it's just the uh, the Mystic Snake and the Split Shot spam. You still have the Aegis and the Morphling as well, don't forget, so... Yeah, American Goons should be able to group up and... Try to make maybe a smoke happen with this Aegis Cheese still available. Maybe wait for the Ags to be completed on Esk before you do try to make those plays happen, but... Overall, I mean, you, you definitely want to try and make the most out of this Aegis if you can. Uh, the cut for now, I mean, obviously in a pretty strong position, just need to sit back and relax for a little bit. Still plenty of scaling yeah. to go on from these sides. Because now you've got a right click Zeus, right? So MTD can essentially just change his whole build now. Just go for the right click items as a Zeus. And he has already queued up the uh, the Eye of Scardi now. So probably just going to get rid of the Flackery or the Midas. Yeah, this is where the Zeus does get a little bit crazy. And again, his damage is an insane burst. But up against the heroes you have on the side of American Goons. 
we still burn through quite a fair bit. Wait for the side of the greens this time. It's like you said, wait for the Ags and Esk to have the Octarine up and running on Lil Nick. I have to say, one of the more annoying things about the Zeus, of course, is using the Thunder God's Rat the Scout out. You just can't do much. You, you don't have counterplay here for the side of the American Greens into that. It's just free vision, and you already worry about the Clinks and the Spirit Breaker being on top of you. Not much that allows you to really stop that at the moment, outside of, again, maybe a good disruption save from Giant, but that's been easier said than done here. Well, this big smoke up. Four man smoke here in the mid lane. American Goons going to start rotating into that, uh, that Radiant Triangle. Here we go, Lasso is out. They've caught the Zeus, MTD. He's a big, big target. He's going to try and BKB and try to go for the fight back. In fact, he is gone. Scourge McDuck, already popped the Stone Gaze moving in, and with all these silences out, it's really hard for Goons to try and fight back. Boris is trying for the fight. He will lose the Aegis to begin with, though. Though in the meantime, B-God loses his life. Boris is back up now. Arde is going to be the big target on the Spirit Breaker, but he does get forced off the ways. Now Lil Nick is just going right in. He has already found Empyrean. Just bursting down the Silencer. The kind of lost three? They really only yeah. find an Aegis for their uh, for their trouble. And this time the fight opens up in a pretty good way for the side of the American Goons. And as weird as it is, jumping the Zeus first does take away a lot of that bite. Like the physical output of the Zeus is still pretty damn big, but you remove this uh, shard buildup on the Zeus, you remove those lightning hands spamming out the Arc Lightning, and it suddenly gives you an opportunity. And the Diffusal pickup here as well by Boris. Really good read is to just to melt the Dusa. And onto the high ground they go. Creep wave still coming in. Backdoor will fade away and they are set to perhaps take the first set of racks. Although respawns aren't too far off here. Well, they certainly are not. Mid tier 3 tower though is going to go down. American goons not intending on sticking around too long. But there's a very fast charge out from Arde. It's going to last on to land onto Pingu's, but that's going to be about it. They aren't going to commit all the way. Though he does have another charge up now, if they didn't want to keep going. But it seems like American Goons are the ones that are going to look to turn around now. Oh. Lasso is out. They've caught the Spirit Breaker, but an immediate Global Silence committed by Empyrean to make sure they cannot keep the follow-up going. So now B-God does secure a kill onto what seems like the Batrider. Though Boris is sticking around does end up morphing into the Medusa illusion as Boris, he's dropping pretty low. Uh, the man manor is almost gone. He is still trying to fight, but eventually has to wave form away as Lil Nick is the one holding the line. MTD is gone. Now they've got the Medusa. The manor falling extremely low for McDuck, but he is still alive, still trying his Boris. best to survive in this team fight. Meanwhile, though, they get the morphling down. Scourge, he is completely out of mana, but nobody's left to take him out. Everyone else being zoned away. Arde finding the Ember. Luonic going down here on the Timber. And Scourge McDuck surviving on zero mana. What a shame. It's, uh, that's a close call. They were forced to buy back on the side of the cut. And two buybacks coming out there. Big one in MTD. But they had to save there. Like if they lost Scourge McDuck one more time, it would have definitely been a high ground attempt here from the side of the American Goons. So they stall for time. Again, cost some buybacks, but you're at the point where you probably don't need too much more on your Zeus anyway, outside of just maybe a defensive item up, which in this case is the Lincolns to stack on top. But the side of the American Goons, Even I it was a pretty see. awkward fight overall. I think um, you just didn't have enough output. You didn't have the full complement of your team to help you try and handle that use of Scourge McDuck. Still have some good solutions in terms of morphling for sure. I don't think this matchup ever gets bad for the morph, but just a lot harder again in, in some of these prolonged engagements. And I think right now, for the side of American Greens, you need this Ags to be up in shine. Like if you manage to get the multiple charge, Demonic Cleanse and Demonic Purge, it does actually simplify these fights. You can always have a save ready for any of your cores. You can always have a way of suppressing the side of the cut. 
That does require a lot of space out for Giant. It's a little ways off from that full eggs, but once it is up, again, should help the cause here. It should. Let's pick smoke up again here from uh, American Goons, though. I believe the smoke may have been scouted because the Medusa illusions were there. Esk is going to jump in early. Lasso is out onto Imperium, but there's no follow up damage, so the Global Science is still going to come off. And Pingus, he is the one to fall as now they even found Giant, forced to buy back for this team fight. Onto Lil Nick they go, but he chains to the high ground. The double chains out from Esk, holding them down a little bit longer. But American Goons not seeing the opening they're looking for. Even with the buybacks committed, they just can't keep going. It's the cut that are really being the aggressors here in this game number two. And no, you're kind of just trying to buy time for this Batrider to be back up, I think. Just stall. And the high ground's not being pierced yet by the side of the cut. Roshan is up, though. I could, could just go for the safer objective. Instead, they are opting to just shove in every lane. I think right now, the Global Silence is really the one thing that's ruining them, especially the, with a the refresh on hand from Imperium. Like your BKBs just don't feel effective no matter what here for the side of the American Goons. Just need to double down. I mean, getting Boris with a BKB. Should be able to survive through the Global Silence it's a little bit better if he stacks his debuffs or his dispels on. Rush number three. Going the way of the cut. No issues here. Three ags on the deck for Scourge McDuck now. With his shard. And you've got the Mystic Snake turning everyone to stone. So it's, again, just even harder to handle that Dusa at this point. And the cut. Doing a fantastic job of just staying in control. The game despite dropping a couple of team fights early on it it's never been enough for the side of the american goons to go onto the high ground just yet and i'm keen to see uh, and and how fast they can start to clear out these objectives still have to respect the drag back on the american goons you know you've got a bat rider lasso back into the high ground is generally a play you always have to watch out for but for the most part i do believe that you've got the resources in the cut to just kind of take control here. As long as you don't die randomly, you're pretty good here. Well, top lane, Esk. He's going to be hanging around, but he does take the wisdom room for himself. But Arde may have been charging him for a moment, but that was not the case. The cut's still taking their time to try and go up to that high ground, just respecting the, the fight potential here from American Goons. You know, both creep waves in the mid and bottom lane are there, so they can try for this, but... I'm going to think better of it. There's your smoke out from the cut. They'd love a straggler first. Like, just a solo pickoff would be a really nice start before they do move high ground. But that uh, pickoff is uh, not making itself very well known here in the map. American goods have to spend their time trying to get some more net worth on their side of things. The cut being very conservative with their gameplay, not trying to rush into this too, rush into this too early. Esk, gonna be spotted here by B God, but the remnant away is immediate as Esk is just gonna go for the uh, the TP play out. Was spotted by the Thunder God's Wrath, but it's not gonna make the difference. Sadly, you don't have anything like a Nimbus up on uh, on MTD to cancel the TP of the end of that in that situation. Who needs it? You've got the right clicks there, Mike. Right. Why bother with canceling TPs if you can right click someone down? Death is the ultimate debuff. Yeah. In Dota 2. That's true. So really sad as well. This double damage rune down at the bot lane just has not been spotted. But this bot rune, uh, this bot rune has just been sitting there for such a long time. And I'm sure if the cut could find it, they would be more than happy to try and move high ground with Skirt McDuck and his double damage, but. They, uh, they have not been so lucky to, to actually pick that one up yet. Or even see it for that matter. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And so, the very, very slow siege continues between these two. Scourge McDuck, he will start to move up now on his own. What about trying to burn through the mana of Scourge? 
Global Science immediately out onto Pingus as he did try to leap in for the lasso attempt. Lil Nick still going, is forced to pop the reactive armor to be able to survive with the shield up. It's now Scourge, he's dropping a little bit low on mana, but still looking rather healthy. They do focus down Giant in the back, but Giant has the Ghost Scepter, so he's going to be fine to walk away. Meanwhile, charge into the T4 towers now. Giant's still running, but Arnie is just going all the way in. He's gone maybe a little bit too far, though, but they are just chasing him down, and Arnie is gone. Uh, I'm really not sure why you chase that deep. Yeah, I mean, Giant, I suppose, is a big pickoff here on the Shadow Demon, but it does cost them the high ground attempt. Mind you, they did find the mid melee barracks, so I, I suppose it's good enough. Good enough. You're not being too upset there for good old Ade. I think the side of the American goons, I mean, the Morphling is still a big threat, but it's not really enough to fully shut away Scourge McDuck. I do like that we're going to see the uh, full disperser coming out from Boris. So a little bit more to come out, especially when you take that form in the Dusa. But the game is just getting pretty difficult. Your scaling is kind of plateauing now on Lil Nick. Heck, even on Esk, it does feel like you're starting to hit a hard cap in what you can do in this game. You start to rely even more on Boris. Not like you haven't been relying on him anyway. Full side of Vice up for MTD. Even more control coming out now for our good old Zeus. Just so many ways of popping these Lincolns and getting that single target control here from the side of the goons. Go for the goons. Oh, almost found a freebie in Empyrean. Does manage to back off in the nick of time. They can opt for perhaps top, although the lanes will need repairs. They've done a great job here on the side of the cut to keep every lane. Well, mostly shoved out. Really, the top shoved out. They will smoke up here, though. My waters rise. They will. The cut will start moving up towards the north of the map. But the retreat is there from American goons. I mean, you, ha you do have a charge on Giant at the least, but... Arda, he's going for now. Like, you'll keep the vision up on Giant for a little bit longer. Does eventually cancel the charge off. Smoke is out from the cut, but a five man smoke as well from the American Goons. The Thunder God's Wrath is going to give plenty of vision over the dire end of things, and Pingo again has been caught. He is down in the Bat Rider, just unable to survive the initial onslaught from Scourge McDuck. In the cut, knowing the Bat is down, they could try to force buyback if they really want to, but it seems like. It might just be all about the next Roshan here in this game because it's it's proving to be a little bit too challenging to actually safely go high ground here for the Radiant. Would definitely agree with that point. It's just a little bit tougher to fully siege without copying a couple of hits. Again, they, they respect the hold coming out, coming out from the American Goons. Although, to be fair, like you've got a 22k lead. You've got a massive gap with Scritch McDuck and everyone else. The Dusa is at the point where it is the be-all and all now. And we'll just get started slowly but surely up here. Scritch McDuck is gonna try. T3 tower is down. Well, they're continuing to move forward but the shield is about to wear off. Arde in the meantime has found Giant on the Shadow Demon and now he is onto Lil Nick. Lil Nick on the timber falling quite hard here is probably just going down and he is down. They do take him out. The Arde has dropped as well. MTD in the meantime healing up just a little bit trying to survive as the jump is there from Esk but Esk has gone too far. They do have buybacks. So the retreat is going to be there from the cut just for a little bit. Trying to get a bit of a reset and not even forcing the buybacks quite yet. The Boris moves down to the low ground and Scourge McDuck will reveal oh. himself. In goes Pingus again though and well they just he's trying so hard to get a lasso onto this Medusa but it's not working out in his favor. Here come the buybacks from Lil Nick, Pingus and S because they are going to go for perhaps the final team fight of this uh this game as MTD never mind he's down. Scourge McDuck going to be focused by Boris and the rest of the squad. Boris though Dropping a little bit too low, does need to retreat. Esk dying back immediately on the Ember. 
It's now MTD seeing that does buy back on the Zeus. At least they do get the Morphling out of there, but now Lil Nick might just be dying back on the Timbersaw. Giant will save for now with the disruption. Lil Nick needs an escape route, but he's gonna have to go for the fight, it seems. He is still running, still barely making it out. Lil Nick has actually gotten out of there somehow. Zane is gonna die on the Spirit Breaker. That'll be a dieback on him. He'll morph into the SP and just charge away for a moment as now Scourge McDuck is completely out of mana. The Medusa might be going down, but Boris needs to be careful himself. They have got the Dusa in the end. B-God now also caught in the clinks. Ah. Uh... Yeah. High ground does not work out once again here for the cut. It's a really scrappy fight coming out, but it does work in favor of the side of the American goons. They they just managed to split up the fight really well. They break it up, they use just the mobility under heroes here on the American goons to dance around a little bit more. And this is a Dusa that's almost 20k above everyone else. To be fair, that is the entire net worth lead of the cut in their lineup with 20k up over American Goon. So you are kind of all in on the Dusa kind of to do to, to do your work here. Does fall short. Scru Scourge McDuck does give the my bad out there. Now you have to contend with a level 5 Dagon on Lil Nick Radiance with the Octarine up. And he's got they've got some smooth ways to try to clear out through this mana shield of the Deuce at this point. The Spurs are up and running for Boris. And the side of the American Goons, they've they've got a chance. Not not a big chance just yet, mind you, but Roshan is available for them. They could just look to take it out with the Ags on hand. And I, they should get going. That's going to be a nice Ags to hand over onto Giant. Just give the man multiple cleanse and purge charges. He needs it. I will see who they do, who they do want to give it to. And Lil Nick may just want to free up the slot as well for himself with the Axe Blessing. It seems like Giant is going to walk towards it. Does pick it up. Aegis will go the way of Esk here on the, uh, on the Embers. He does not have buyback available. So Chi is going to be picked up here by Boris. American Goons, I mean, slowly but surely making this big comeback happen. It's the cut. Are they going to four-man smoke again? They know they've just missed that on Roshan. Into the mid lane they go. They'll see Lil Nick here on the timber. it will be a nice way to start the next fight. They have caught up the timber immediately and Lil Nick is just going to get bursted down. All right, already off to an amazing start. Here is the cut. So Lil Nick was not expecting that. Now they're thinking about going high ground again. Knowing it's a 4v5. Just stack triple Lincolns on top of the one Lincoln Scourge McTuck has. They really don't want to have to deal with the Deuce of Four from the Morph. Like, this is outrageous. Oh, well, Global Sword's a little bit early, but they have found Giant. Nullify gonna make it so Giant cannot get out of this. Meanwhile, Boris is gonna morph into the Spirit Breaker form now. Trying to back his way out. We'll go back in onto Arde. Not looking too tanky though against the Medusa. They do refresh the Global Silence, and Boris is still trying, does eat the cheese, but does need to get his way out. Meanwhile, S dropping low himself, trying to save the Aegis for now. So he will remnant away. And the cut, I'm just not sure if this is really worth it, because they could just go for a Rax. And now they will. Scourge McDuck, on the tier 3 bottom tower. Gonna secure at least that. We'll find the bot Rax as well, by the looks of it. I highly doubt they'll be able to slow him down from doing this. And now Mega Creeps are officially on the way here from the cut. American Goons. Not out of the game yet, but they are certainly in dire straits. Scourge McDuck, that proving to be the big issue that they still can't find a way to deal with. But he is dropping extremely low on mana now. Maybe they can actually take him down. But Scourge. Still just continuing to go to work here on to Boris, who's trying to fight, but Arne is just constantly controlling him up. And Boris is gone. That should probably just be it. They are going to buy back one more time in the Morphling, but the Ancient is being focused here by the cut. I highly doubt they'll go for another fight, though Boris is going to charge in. He is on to B God. The Cleansk is gone. That is one down. Pingus is going to go for a lasso as well onto Arne, but they cannot protect the Ancient. It'll just get focused. 
Eventually, the cut will force us to a game number three.